welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. Uh, everybody watch online. Thank you for joining us as well. Uh, last week, we kind of started this series, Stress Less. And to live a, a, a life with less stress in it is something that I think we all want to do. Because here's the thing, and Shaheen said this last week, the statistic is staggering how much stress affects us. 75 to 90 percent of all doctor's visits, think, let that sink in for a second. 70, the far majority of all doctor's visits, call, make an appointment, going to see the doctor, is stress-related. Stress-related, that's huge. It affects our life so, so very much. And I know that every single one of us have been stressed. We've all been up at night. We've all thought about this. Along with stress comes worry and fear and all that stuff. And in our lives, every one of us know what it's like to have our, our gut just turning with stress, with so much worry, it, we, we all know what that is. So I want to just ask you this. Imagine for a second, just for a second, what would it be like to live your life with less stress in it? I mean, just think about how, how great that would be. To live your life, man, with, we'll just take my worry level and we'll bring it to here. All, all my anxiety level, bring it to here. And actually live life that way. I mean, wouldn't that be fabulous? I think every one of us would want that in our life. And imagine how much better life would be. Well, guess what? That's what this series is all about. And this isn't a series just for, oh, wow, I heard some good stuff. Oh, oh wow, that's really cool what the Bible says. This series so much has the potential to change our lives. If we would just listen, ponder, and engage in these four weeks, these simple things, I guarantee you we could all live a life with less stress in it, that it could change it. And so, hey, I'm in. I hope you're in. I hope if you're watching at home that you're in because this isn't just good talk. This is life changing what God says can absolutely change our lives. So I hope that every one of us after the series live a life stress less in our, in our lives. Now last week Shaheen kicked it off and he was talking about the stress of money. Most of us know what the stress of money is. Most of us went through it. Most of us have had burdens, sleepless nights, all that stuff about money problems, money issues, never have enough, owe too much, all that kind of stuff. But what he did is he talked about what was the core reason for that. And the reason for that is discontent. That there is something about the human life, there's something inside of each one of us that we are trying to fulfill, we're trying to be satisfied and we think that if I just get that, if I get that, if I, if I include this, if I have this, if I do this, if I go there, then I will, I will fill this void in my life that I will be, ah, I'll be satisfied. And it's this discontent, this not being content, this always wanting something, we don't know what it is, drives us and drives us and drives us to work harder, to spend more money, to buy more stuff, to get, get busier and busier and to fill this because we're all looking for this being satisfied somehow. But here's the weird thing about this. this is every one of us, if you're over the age of 12, you have already proven to yourself we can't be content, we can't set, be satisfied with what we buy. Every one of us know that. We've all experienced. This isn't like, oh, I'm not sure if that's true. We all know it's true. We've all had that. If I just had that, I would be, I'd be content. If I just bought that, if I just dated them, if I just had this. But we, we've all been there. And you know what? Every one of us have proven to ourselves, shoot, that didn't did it. That didn't did it. That didn't do it. That didn't do it. And we know that. So what do we think? This is how naive we are sometimes. I mean, all of us. Like, oh, it was the wrong thing. Let me try this. We've tried that. Let me try this. We've tried that. Hey, the whole point is, the reason that we are so stressed financially is because we have such discontent. And the only way to find contentment is in a relationship with God. And like, there's... There's this God void in our lives that we try to fill with everything else that can only be filled with God, and then we will have contentment. Today, I want to talk about something that's similar to that, causes so much stress in our life, and it has a lot to do with not having these things, but it's a little broader, and it's this, that every one of us have stressed over this kind of thinking, the what-if thinking. Think about how many sleepless nights you've had. Thinking about, what if the economy crashes? 
What if Biden actually wins? What if, did I hear some, mm, or, or Trump, okay, whatever. What if, what if the economy's done? What if, what if I lose my job? What if, what if my, man, we had a bad fight? What if my spouse leaves me? What, what if my uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, what if they, what, what if, what am I going to do? What, we've been, we've been up at night, our, our lives are turning, we have all this stress, we have all this worry, with all this, oh, what, what if I can't do that anymore? What if the doctor report comes back? What if my spouse is sick? What if this happens? What if that happens? It's this what if thinking, we've all been there, we know this, that the, the, the turmoil, this, as a matter of fact, Probably right now in your life, you're what ifing something, and it's adding a little stress in your life, and it's probably, you know, make, making you not sleep at night or whatever it is. But here's the thing about this, this what if thinking it really comes down to this it comes down to that fact that we are insecure. We are insecure because every one of us, if we had something, that gave us joy, something that we really loved, something that satisfied, and we knew the economy couldn't take it away. We knew that relationships couldn't take it away. If we knew that we had something that we really needed, and it was secure and we couldn't lose it, we would live stressless. We would. Think about it. If there was something you knew that you just you couldn't lose it, it would be there. I would have it no matter what. It's, it can't be taken. It's, it's secure. It's protected. I will have it. You and I would live stress less in our lives. But this whole idea of what I want to satisfy me and having it secure, it's kind of like on a scale. It, it's kind of like Maslow's whole hierarchy thing. It's, a, it's this hierarchy. If we, if we lose one thing, we know at least, oh, hey, if we lose this, at least I got this. Or if I lose that, at least I got this that I can count on. And that gives us some kind of comfort. Uh, I, I think that I, I think this way. I'm assuming that most of us do. Hey, it, what if gas goes up to, they're going to stop fracking. We're going to no longer be oil independent. What if gas goes to $10 a gallon? Oh, shoot, I'm all stressed about it. But, oh, hey, at least I'll still be able to ride my motorcycle. At least I'll still, it gets good gas mileage, at least I'll be able to still ride my motorcycle. Or, hey, if I lose my job, hey, you know what, at least, oh, gosh, at least the house is paid for. So, oh, man, at least that. We got, we got this thing that doesn't matter what I lose, or it matters, but as long as I have this. For me, I have, I have this fear of uh, losing our right to bear arms. So losing our right to, I have that. I don't know if you do, it doesn't matter, but I do. Because, you know, I'm a hunter, and I, I love hunting, and I, I, I just enjoy guns and shooting them and all that stuff. And I think sometimes I get stressed thinking, what if we lose our rights? What if America, we, we lose? It's illegal to have a gun. I go, oh, after turmoil, I go like this. Oh, at least we still have our bow archery equipment. Okay? It, it was just an excuse to show you the picture twice. Isn't that beautiful, nice Texas book? Minnesota. Is you guys into that? Okay, I just want you to know, this is true. At least I can still bow hunt. What is your at least I still have? And this, and this hierarchy thing, this, if, if, we lose, if you lose something in your life, what is it that you kind of go, well, at least I have this. At least I still have my boat. Doesn't matter if I have gas for it, I can still get in the water. Water's free, my boat's paid for. At least, at least I have my boat. Hey, at least I have my house. At least I have my furniture. You know what? For a lot of us, it comes down to this. No matter how bad things get, no matter what I worry about and stress over losing, if I do lose it, at least I have my family. Hey, at least for many of us, it's at least I have my health. I do at least I have my health. And some of us are there. We go this whole idea. So my question for you today is to actually take a moment, even if you're at home, take a moment and think about this. What is my at least I have? What, is, what, what would you fill, fill that in? Hey, even if things get bad, if I lose a lot of things in life, at least I have X. What is your X? What is it that gives you peace? That at least I have. What is it in your life that oh, at least that's secure? Now think about that. Because it's very important to us. So now my question is this. How secure is it? Whatever your X is, 
How secure is that? Because sometimes we think, hey, at least bottom line, I got that. And I think we all know something. We all know that even that is not secure. I think we all know that I could lose that. I hope I don't, and I probably won't, but we all know that that is not secure. As a matter of fact, if we think about it, which we don't often, but if we think about it, is there anything in this world that we can absolutely count on being there? Not changing. Always having it. Because the truth is, it's not. Jesus told a story to kind of emphasize this. This story has a lot to do with money. This fits in with last week and kind of this week together. Kind of has to do with, with both. But he's t- talking, telling a story that he says, hey, suppose there's a guy. There's this guy that he has everything. He's worked hard his whole life. He's been very responsible. And this, we should always be responsible and do our best. He was responsible, did, our, did his best and all that. But he got to a place where he said, oh, I have finally worked so hard. I finally put everything in order. I finally arranged everything that I am secure. I finally got things in my life that I can count on. Okay, I'm finally there. And then this guy talks. Jesus is making the the story, and he says this. Then he said, this guy that's got everything, he said, this is what I will do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones. And there I will store my surplus grain and I will, I will be able to say to myself, you have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy, eat, drink, and be merry. You are finally secure. Sounds like the American dream, doesn't it? I've worked my whole life to make sure I got enough, to make sure it's protected. Okay, I put it in things that are protected. And I get, you know what? I take care of my health. I exercise. I've got good relations. I've done, I've done everything I can. That now i got... Whew, I don't have to worry or fret anymore. There's no more stress in my life because I have taken care of everything and now I am secure. I think that's what we're all looking for. I think that's what we're trying to get. But Jesus doesn't end the story there. He says this. But God said to him, you fool. How ignorant can you be? I hear something knocking. How ignorant can you be? Like, whoa, maybe you thought America was secure. I don't know. Maybe you thought, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself, that you have been so secure, that you have been so secure? Like, what's going to happen then? Because here's the point of Jesus' story, and that is this. Nothing is secure. Nothing in life is secure. Therefore, we live our life with so much stress because we could lose everything at any time. There is nothing secure in this world. And so, so many times we're working to make sure it's secure, secure, secure. I want everything secure. And then, boom, what happens to us when that is lost, when it is gone? Then we are broken and we are empty. We're not. So if you and I are going to live stressless, if we're going to live with less stress in our life, listen, and it's possible, you and I can All we need to do is find something that fulfills two requirements. And we can do this. Okay, find something that fulfills two requirements. Number one is this. We need to find something in our life that is truly satisfying if we lost everything else, that is truly satisfying It truly brings joy. Now think about it. we got to find something that even though everything else is lost, at least I have this, and this brings me joy and comfort. I could live fine with just this. So it has to bring us joy and comfort. And the second thing is, it has to be absolutely secure. Nothing can take it away. Nothing can, it doesn't matter, economy comes and goes, world war happens, whatever happens, people die, we lose everything, all that, that it cannot be taken away. So what can you think of that fulfills those two things? Absolutely satisfying and is absolutely secure. If we find that, we will live stressless. Can you think of something? Truth is, it comes down to just one thing. There is nothing else. God is the only thing that is secure. It is our relationship with God. 
Everything else can be lost. Everything else will be lost. It doesn't matter who you are or what you have. If you live long enough, you will lose everything you've ever had. That's just the way the world is. Only God is secure. Only God can be enough to say, I am satisfied. I'm fulfilled. I, I know I can't do that anymore, and I can't buy that, and I can't live there, and I can't do that, but you know what? It doesn't matter. I'm like, I'm good. I'm, I'm happy. I'm fulfilled. I'm, I'm satisfied. There's only God that can do that, and there's only God that can't be taken away. And the Apostle Paul wrote so, so often, but one time he, he specifically said that nothing can separate us from God, not life, not death, not good, not bad, not rich, not poor, not, nothing can separate us from God. Nothing can take God away from us. He is absolutely secure. So God fulfills both of those. He is fulfilling contentment, joy, and he is also secure. That's why. We read so many times in the Bible about the early church and the followers of Christ. Their lives were not good. They lost so much. That, I mean, the whole early church did so much. But yet they were to say, honestly, I'm fine. There's, there, there's, there's several scriptures that, that Paul just shared that I have learned to be content. Shaheen read it last week. That, you know what, I'm satisfied. And this, this one scripture I'm going to talk about in a second, Paul was at the very end of his life. He's writing to Timothy, the last known letter of him. He's in prison. He's going to be martyred and, and put to death. And, and here's, here's what he says. He says, at my first defense, no one came to my support. Gosh, this just makes me so... I just get sad when I read this. The Apostle Paul gave his life in ministry. He went through so much. And now he's at the end of his life. He's on trial. He's going to be murdered. And everybody, everybody left him. That's got the potential for depression right there. Everyone deserted me. But he said, may it not be held against them. So oftentimes we'd say, well, they should get theirs. I'll get them back. And he, he was fine. I mean, he really was like, I wish they were here, but you know what? I'm not held against them. I know it's a tough thing. But he says this, but the Lord stood at my side and gave me strength. This isn't just a wish me thing. This isn't just a like, well, I wonder if that's true. This is true. That God can bring contentment and peace and he is so secure he can never be taken away. Here Paul is at the end of his life and he's going through all this stuff and he says, hey, you know what? It was sad. Okay, they're gone. I wish they were here. I'm a little bit lonely, but God was with me and I'm fine. I'm okay. Even earlier, Paul says, He's been shipwrecked, and he's been stoned, he's been beaten, and all these things. But he said, but God brought me through, that God was with me through every one of those, every one of those things. This is true. This can make our lives stress less if we find our joy and fulfillment in the presence of God. Because only God is secure and can't be taken away no matter what happens. Have you ever watched other people's lives from a distance and said, how could they be good through that? I've known people who have lost children. I know people who have lost their money, their finances, lost their jobs, been through divorces, all that. Some people, it destroys their life, and you can see why. But I've noticed others, it's a bummer, but they're fine. They go through just fine. It's because they have found their peace, their joy, and their fulfillment comes from knowing God. Bob Gertz, Bob and Missy Gertz came to this church for, forever. Bob's still here, but Missy had, was diagnosed with cancer. Such a shock, the C word. Uh, it was very serious. They did the best to fight it and stuff, but as she was dying, they embraced the fact that she's dying. She's going to heaven. She's not going to be punished. She's going to be rewarded. Like, she gets to be the first one, you know? Like, this is great. And if you see Bob today, you see him, like, man, he lost his wife, and they were married for so many years, and had kids, and their first grandkids were coming. And, and you see him, and you go, Bob, you know, like, he misses Missy, but he's fine. You go, how can a guy be fine through that? It comes down to this. Because... His joy, 
His foundation, his fullness, his completeness comes from a relationship with God that can never be taken away. John Gilbert, uh, if, you're, if you've never been to church here, you don't know John. Some of you might know him. He's actually sitting in the hallway every week now. But let me tell you John's story. A couple of years ago, he was diagnosed with uh, kidney cancer. And so you can imagine the news of that. John, how you doing? Well, I'm fine. What's, what's the diagnosis? Oh, I think I'm going to have my kidneys removed. And has his kidneys removed. He goes through a couple years of uh, dialysis, two or three times a week. Or really, John, how you doing? I'm fine. What do I mean you're fine? You want to slap him, right? What do I mean you're fine? I'm well, fine. How can you be fine? Well, because my joy and my fulfillment is not in my health or my inconvenience. It's my, my source is God, and he's still there. doesn't matter if my kidneys aren't, but he's still there. Then he went through a kidney transplant and then went through rejection stuff. And all of this crud that you and I would have a bad day. You go, how can he be? When you leave here, if you see John, and you may not, but ask him, John, how you? every time I say, John, how are you doing? Fine. How can he be fine? Because he has found that the source of his life and his joy and his fullness and completeness is secure Kidneys or no kidneys, cancer or no cancer, dialysis or no dialysis, that he is fine in his relationship with God. And this is why the Apostle Paul prays for every one of us. Because I know, I know, some of us may be watching this or some of us here, we're listening to this and we're going, yeah, that might be true and stuff, but I don't want that. I, I want what I want. You say, well, but God can fulfill you. I know God can, or maybe He can, or maybe He can't, but I know, you know, a house, a relationship, my children, whatever, that's going to be fulfilling. And here's the American prayer. The Christian American prayer is this. Father, I know that You are good, and I know that You want to fulfill our lives, so please give me this so I will be fulfilled. Please heal this. Please." Say, and there's nothing wrong with praying that, except for all of our hope is in that. And I think God would want to lean over and say, you're kind of missing it. You don't need that healing. You don't need that house. You don't need that marriage. You don't need that to be fulfilled and complete. You need me. I'm the one that fulfills. I am the one that completes you. I am the one that gives joy. All of those things are nice. But when we depend on them and our prayers, oh God, you give me those so that your promises will be true. And God says, no, my promise is true. It's me. I will fulfill your life and do that. And so many of us have never experienced that. We just haven't. Some of us don't even don't want to. I'd rather have these things because I know that they'll make me happy. God, I'll wait till I get to heaven. That's why Paul prayed this, I believe, for every one of us. He says, I pray that out of his glorious riches he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being. It's this inner being that is our problem. It's this inner being that, that is looking to be satisfied. It's this inner being that's looking for peace and contentment and fullness. It's this inner being that's looking for that, and we keep looking for it out there, and it's in here, and he says, I pray that it will be in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. He goes on. And he says, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with all the Lord's holy people, with every single Christian, to grasp and to understand and to experience and to know how wide and long and high and deep the love of Christ is and to know this love, to experience this love that surpasses just knowing about it. And to know this love that surpasses knowledge. Why? That you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Paul's saying, I know that we see these things in the world. I know this. and I know we want to find our joy and our fullness and our completeness and our satisfaction in all of these things in relationships. And he says, Paul's saying, I want you to experience the fullness of God, which surpasses everything else. 
It is more completing and more satisfying, and it is so secure it can never be taken away that if you and I experience God, if we find our joy and our hope and our foundation in a relationship with God, then there will be less stress in our life of what if. What if we lose this? What if we do? It's a bummer. That's bad. But we will never lose our source of joy and fulfillment if it's in God. How do we do that? So many of us have never experienced that. We believe in God. We know Jesus. We're going to heaven. But seriously, we're still we're at this place where, but I need other things, not just God's, because we've never experienced God. I just want to encourage you, as we wrap this up, I think every one of us can live a stressless life. Every one of us can move in this direction. We can. The Bible, simple, simple instructions. The first one is just this, to taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Listen, you haven't experienced him, but I'm encouraging you, experience God. Allow God, maybe this possibility that God, okay, could you be more exciting than a motorcycle? Could you be more fulfilling than a house? Could you be so satisfying more than a relationship with my spouse? Or my, God, I don't even know. Could you? So say, taste and see. Taste and see. You might discover, like so many people have, God's better than all of those things. He really is. How do I pursue that? How do I? It's this simple. Come near to God, and He will come near to you. Every one of us can take a step towards God. It's not a magic bullet. It's not going to happen all at once. It's a, but there is this process. It's, it's a cumulative thing where we learn to experience God, and God is absolutely fulfilling as we take a step towards God and say, God, I'm not even sure. I've never, I still think I want a boat, but, but hey, let's see. Take a step towards God and find out. How do I take a step? You're taking a step right now. You're here in service, making this a habit of your life. That's a step towards God, to experiencing Him. If you're watching online, you can't go to church or whatever, and you're watching online, keep watching. That's a step towards God. Or come into our worship night. I mean, the church provides steps that we all can easily take advantage of. Worship night once a month is just the most glorious time to experience God's presence and His fullness he, there's nothing that we need more than Him. Nothing. Going into a small group, reading your Bible, spending time praying with God. It can take the stress out of our life. Really quick, before I close, I'm going to tell one quick story. It just happened uh, just actually this morning. My daughter, my youngest daughter, um, is her and her husband. they got a couple kids, and they're... They've, they've had a couple houses, but they're actually building their dream house right now. They're, they got the plans, they got the money and everything. And it's like so exciting. You can imagine if you're in your uh, early, mid-20s, 30s, how old is she? I don't know, mid-30s, and uh, you know, plan all that. And she just said to me today, she said, Dad, and all these plans for this new house on this property, and it's great. She said, hey, Dad, um, if this does if this house doesn't happen, I'm okay. So really, all these plans, I said, are you telling me the truth? All these plans that, you know, build this awesome house and been saving for so many years and went through a couple other step houses to get to this one. And really, if this doesn't happen, you're okay. And she said, oh yeah, you know what? We're living in a basement somewhere right now. Like, we're fine. We're, it doesn't matter. It'd be nice, but it doesn't matter. She was pregnant a year ago and lost the child. Amber, how are you doing? It hurts, but we're fine. It hurts, but we're fine. Why? Because God is life. God is eternity. God, this stuff is here and there, and we're going to see this child again. We're fine because our foundation isn't this world that we could lose. Our foundation is in a relationship in the presence of a living, eternal God who is so secure that His promises and everything will never stop, will never be, that it will always be there, and we're living in that. That is the key to a stressless life. Having God as a foundation in our life that is so secure, nothing can take Him away. 
I want to pray for us that this isn't just a thought. This is life-changing. For God to satisfy ourselves so that we don't have to buy and buy and buy and fill. That God can be so secure in our lives that we don't have to worry, worry, worry because we can never lose Him. That this can change our lives. Let's, let's take a moment. Father, I know so oftentimes we have misconstrued what you do for us, that we, we've almost been taught that you give us things so that we're happy and we're content and your children get what they want. So, Father, that's so... There's an element of truth in that, but that is the foundationally wrong. You say, I give you life. I am the bread of life. I am living water. I will satisfy your inner being. I will satisfy your soul. Father, we look to you to satisfy us. Many of us have learned to experience you and be satisfied with you, and I pray that we would continue to know you more and more and better and better and be more secure all the time. But Father, there are some of us, honestly, that we just don't know what I'm talking about. We, we think it might be true, but we've never experienced it. Father, I pray especially for each one of us that are in that spot. I pray that as we take a step towards you, as we say, maybe, God, can you be that fulfilling? I pray that as each person takes a step towards you, that you would take ten giant steps towards them. Prove yourself to every single one of us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks again for joining us today for our online service. We, we really do hope that you're able to get something out of that. Uh, like I said in the beginning, for worship today, if you want to click on the link in the description of this video, we have a playlist of songs that we'd love for you to just sit back, listen to those, take some time to engage. Uh, for the rest of you, again, we are back in person. If you are comfortable coming to an in-person service, we would love to have you here gathering with us. Otherwise, we will continue to do these online services, and we are just so glad that you're joining us. Uh, with that, we hope all of you have a great week. We hope you have a great rest of your day, and uh, we'll see you next week. God bless.